Praise the Lord. As I was seeking God for the word for this Sunday, I was inspired in my spirit to talk about enduring faith, faith that is tested. But I would like to start with a story, a story of a French tightrope walker, Charles Blondin. He was the first person to cross a tightrope stretched 11,000 feet across the mighty Niagara Falls. He walked across 160 feet above the falls several times and each time with a different feet. Once in a sack, once on a bicycle and in the dark blindfolded. Uh, once he even carried a stove and cooked an omelette. Now that should be interesting. And once the crowd cheered him up because he was pushing a wheelbarrow holding a sack of potatoes. Charles Blondin stopped and asked the audience, do you believe I can carry a person in this wheelbarrow? And all of them said, yes, we believe you can do it. And indeed, they believe that he can do it. He paused and he asked them a question back. Who wants to get into the wheelbarrow? Well, there was absolute silence. It's one thing to say we believe. It's yet another thing to trust somebody and give yourself because you trust that person. It's one thing to say, Jesus, we believe you. It's yet another thing to trust Jesus and in him and him alone. Well, faith is not just a feeling. It's, it's not just believing God. It is trusting him and him alone. And when we trust him, he will allow the faith to be tested. Faith is like a muscle. It must be used, stretched, so that it grows from strength to strength. And that's what I want to focus on today. If you want, turn with me to James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. It says in message uh, version, when your faith is tested, your endurance has chance to grow. So let it grow. For when it is fully developed, you will be strong in character. And the next phrase, I want you to pay attention. You will be strong in character and ready for anything. And that's why our Lord allows faith to be tested. So that you and me can be ready for anything. The intent of faith being tested is God wants us to be ready for anything. He wants us to grow in our trust in him. The faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. Well, today I want to meditate on few tests from a list of heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. But just before we go there, I want to share another example. A patient was undergoing a surgery and for the first time and was visibly very panicky and the surgeon asked him why are you so troubled the patient said doc this is my first surgery i've never been th through a procedure like this and the doctor told him hey you know what this is my first surgery too you can imagine what was the plight of the patient we don't want to let anyone touch our bodies unless we know they are tested and they are passed some examinations and that's what we got to do with our faith too well let's turn to hebrews chapter 11 and we will read through from verse 6 onwards hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 to 11 6 says and without faith it is impossible to please god I repeat, it is impossible to please God. We might abide in the love of God, but it is very different to be pleasing God. And if you want to please God without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, I will go straight into verse 16, because between 6 and 16, there are stories of heroes of faith. But 16 talks about another affirmation from Christ, from God, about people who have survived the test of faith. 16, therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Who's God? The people who have passed the test of faith. God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them too. In message version, it says God is so proud of them. Of whom? People who have, people who have uh, test, gone through the test and have qualified those tests. Our faith will be tested so that we are strong in character and we are ready for anything. That's what God wants to do in your life and in my life. So if you turn to Hebrews 11 verse, chapter 11 verse 7, by faith Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen, Noah received a warning from God. 
and in reverence he prepared an ark for the salvation of his household the warning led to an assignment and that assignment was to prepare an ark for the salvation of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir for, of the righteousness which is according to the faith well the test one that we all might go through is a test of a new assignment and if god has brought in a warning a reminder a message into our life and that would lead to an assignment every child of god who hears a message from god has an assignment and the test that we go through is how we respond to this assignment well noah the assignment was to build an ark moses to lead the people out of egypt joshua to lead israelites into the promised land esther to save her people nehemiah to rebuild the wall apostles to take the gospel to the ends of the earth now put your name there and check what is your assignment how are we responding to the assignments that has been entrusted to us we might be wondering i have not received any assignment so i have not received any warning or a message from god like in noah's time he received a warning what about us do we have a warning well it can't be any clearer than the message and the warning of the soon coming king the message and the warning of a judgment day and that's the message that we have if we have received a warning like this it must convert into an assignment and how we respond to this assignment is a test of our faith i want to read through a verse in 1 thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 and 17 for the lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of god and the dead in christ will rise first then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the lord in the air and so we'll always be with the lord the soon coming king is a warning is a reminder is a message and this message must lead to an assignment noah had an assignment to build the ark we must have an assignment to revelation chapter 22 verse 12 to 13 behold i am coming soon bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done i am the alpha and the omega the first and the last the beginning and the end the reset judgment day what more warning do we need this must lead to an assignment over our life many of us have an assignment we know of that assignment and how we respond to it is our test of faith sometimes i compare this time with the time of noah they could not imagine rain they could not imagine an ark and noah kept on preaching and talking to people and declaring that there is a coming flood for 100 years and that's the time for us today too many can't imagine the returning king many can't imagine the judgment day but we have a message how we respond to this assignment is a test of our faith well when god gives an assignment what are some of our usual responses god says go and preach go and share this to somebody or go and do something very new or go and build an ark our first response is what lord are you sure me lord do i do this i don't think i heard this correct i need more confirmations you know what those are responses that shows what we believe and whom we believe i was thinking if you just go back one year from now and in the midst of all our busyness of our schedule if the lord reminded us that there is going to be a lockdown one year from now what would have been our response if the lord reminded of a of a virus kind of a situation what would have been our response would we have taken our assignment seriously or would we have thought that's just another thought you know some some kind of a fantasy but i want us to take our assignment seriously if there is a message from the lord it has to convert it into an assignment from the lord how we respond to this assignment talks about what we believe and whom we believe 
Why is the test for new assignment and, and, and enduring faith? Well, it's not just about starting something. It's not just about getting excited about a new assignment. It's about enduring it till the end, completing the whole journey. So the folks in Hebrews chapter 11, they endured it. The ark was built. Moses did lead the people out of Egypt. Joshua successfully led them into the promised land. Esther boldly saved her people from annihilation. Nehemiah and his team finished the rebuilding of the wall. Apostles and the disciples kept the faith, ran the race, and the gospel is being preached through the ends of this earth. Think of the assignments God has given you. Well, there are times where we need to decide to step into those assignments. In seasons like this, the need to respond to such assignments are huge. Don't let opportunities pass by. Our God is counting on you. He's trusted you with this assignment. And he's looking for how you and me will respond to this assignment. That's a test of our faith. Let's take a grab of it. And let's plunge into it. Take one step at a time. And trusting God at his word. Let's make a beginning in faith, one step at a time. Also be prepared for a long haul. This kind of assignments are not for a 100 meter dash, it's a marathon. And the Lord allows through this process to build our faith, to grow from strength to strength. It's one thing to say, Jesus, we believe in you. It's yet another thing to say, Lord, I trust you and I want to take this step in faith. Well, Bible says that acknowledge him in everything you do and he will direct your path. Many a times we are not clear about what's the, the whole journey. Moses was not clear. Noah was not clear. They were not clear about the whole journey, but they were clear about what's the next step. And that's why Bible says his word is like a lamp unto my feet. And if you re remember, lamp is a small light that can give you light for the maybe next step or maybe the next two steps, not beyond that. I'm not, I don't think a lamp is like the torch that you see today, which can show you light for about a kilometer. No, lamp is one which will show you the next two steps. And Christ is expecting us to trust him for his next step. And in the next step, he will give us the guidance for the next step. His word is a lamp unto our feet and the lamp shows the direction for the next step. Let's take those small steps and move forward in our assignments. I know many who are watching on this video today are, have not yet started their assignments. Make a beginning. There are many who have started and have stopped midway. You got to pursue it. You got to persist your faith. You got to be sticking onto that path because it is for a faith that you started with is the same faith that you bring it to completion you got to finally reach the destination, complete what has been entrusted to you. Today being Father's Day, I want to encourage you fathers, you have an assignment as a king, as a prophet, as a priest at your home. How are you responding to, the pre, uh, to this assignment? I'm talking to myself too. To bring your home into a godly order, how are you as responding to this assignment? Our king is going to come soon. You and your family, how are you responding to that message? Noah's ark ensured that he and his family were safe. Your ark, you and your family needs to be safe. And that's God's plan through you. Take up this assignment. Let's move forward. If I read through verse 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called, obeyed, by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going. The first one is test of new assignment. That's the first thing. The second test is test of new directions. Our God is a God who insists in taking new directions so that you and me grow to be more like him.
and he knows the direction his plans for you and me is far greater than what we can think or even imagine he has seen our future even before we were born while we were in our mother's womb while he was stitching us together he had a plan he had a plan to prosper us he had a future for us and he wants to accomplish that in our life for which he's asking us to take a new direction and that's what he did with abraham he asked him to take a new direction so that's what bible says by faith abraham when he was called he obeyed well today god might be reminding you of new directions god is interested in changing the course of your life you and me can remember umpteen times how god changed the course of our life the very fact that we belong to the family of god is because he changed the course of our life he brought us to the salvation grace of jesus christ to and he enabled us to believe in him and receive his salvation that was a u turn in many of our life but that one u turn is not enough it's a journey we just started off trusting in christ but that's just a beginning from there there are a lot of change in direction well abraham was doing well with his family at haran and his business when god called him out of out out of that place in genesis chapter 12 verse 1 where he says go forth from your country from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which i will show you abraham was 75 years old he settled well he was doing well um, in fact he was ready to retire he thought it's done with his life made some money uh, got good amount of cattle uh, had good family everybody doing well happy family and that's the time god decided time to change course because god had a great plan for abraham beyond what abraham could think or even imagine and that's what god is telling us today he has got great plans for each one of us beyond what we can think or even imagine only if we do some course correction only if we believe in him trust him to make those shift into those new paths well god demanded a new direction for abraham's life i was just thinking god specializes in u turns abraham had a detour in his life and he progressed into a new direction one of my favorite Saul Saul had an encounter and made a complete U turn to be a Paul who once was killing the ones who would follow Jesus became a follower of Jesus and gave his life unto the Lord Jonah did a U turn and that's an interesting story he did a U turn and he ensured Nineveh also did a U turn Peter denied Christ and he did a U turn there are so many u turns in the bible in fact our lord time and again through his prophets have told it multiple time turn back to me come back return to your god come back to our god almighty and he will rebuild your life change your life come back to god your god and that's a call from our living god and that's been consistent the message in the bible to turn our ways to god and if we really trust god we will trust him when he's asking us to change some directions i'm believing that there's somebody on this vi- of who's watching this video today whom god is nudging to make some changes in direction how you respond to those changes is a test of your faith you might just you might say that i believe in jesus well that's one thing but if you really trust him for who he is we will obey him and allow him to do those course correction well when god told abraham to make his course correction change the direction without giving any clarity as to where when how long 
what's the path, what's the distant destination. If we were to plan a vacation, forget vacation these days, but if we were to plan vacations, we will do so much of our planning from this place to there and then take a taxi, do this, you know, timings, all this are so calculated. We want it to be so good and accurate. But when God tells us to do a course correction, it's completely trusting Him. He's our travel planner. And He plans it beautifully to take us to a place where we cannot imagine, where we would not have even imagined of how, where our life could get through. But what He wants us to do is trust Him. Trust Him completely and trust Him alone. He has planned our life well. He has planned our life even before we were born. And he's got a beautiful plan for us. Only if we trust him. And when we trust him, he says do a course correction. The response that he expects from us is a complete obedience. I like that verse. I like that word in that verse. By faith Abraham, when he was called, comma, obeyed. There was nothing in between. There was no further, I need more confirmation. I need more uh, details. I need more clarity. I'm going to wait on this. Well, when you hear from God, do a change, do a course correction. What is expected of us is to just go obey. Abraham heard from God, he obeyed. That's the response he's looking at. By faith, when he was called, Abraham obeyed. Well, it was a major change for Abraham. I don't think he could explain his course correction, change in direction to his relatives and friends. Well, God demanded a new direction. That's it. He just obeyed. Is God asking you for a course correction, a change in a new direction? I want you to start thinking about it. I'm sure the Holy Spirit is nudging some of you to make some correction. He has nudged you through this lockdown period and has been talking about making some, some of those changes. It's about time we show that we not just believe in Jesus, but trust him at his word and, and trust him to make those changes in our life. Well, what is our usual response when God asks us to make some changes? Well, where God? What are those areas? Is that true? Um, is this reasonable? Can we rationalize this? All these words. It sounds weird. Well, Abraham did not have any question. He just trusted. Why? Because he knew who is asking him to make those course correction. And that's important. For some of us, it's a U-turn. For some of us, it could be a slight shift, a slight change. Well, how do we respond to this call for change of course correction is a test of our faith. Our Lord is asking you, uh, some of us to change the course of our life to be a disciple and to be a disciple maker. That's a call over our life to be a disciple and to be a disciple maker. And that's a big call. The only way to clear the test is to obey him completely. Over the last couple of weeks, maybe some of us could have slowed down could have backslidden some of us would have moved forward some of us would have got into a sinful ways but today if you are listening to this voice to this word to this message i want to tell you the spirit of god is asking you nudging you to come back to him to be a disciple of the living god and to do that it requires a u turn that's the test of your faith. You believe in this living God, you got to respond by obeying his call. I'm going to pray for some time so that we take the decision to make a U-turn. And that's important. Unless we take the turn, unless we make that shift, we are not going to progress. We will not go to the next level of test of faith. When God called Abraham, Abraham obeyed. There is an immediacy to the obedience. And that's what God is nudging us today. If, if that's you, I want you to close your eyes and pray with me. 
Father, we come to you, Lord. We hear your voice, God, that you're calling us to come back to you, to turn away from those wicked ways and to turn to you like the way you called Abraham. And Abraham obeyed, Lord, Today, we want to make up our mind, oh God, and decide we want to follow you and you alone. Spirit of God, I pray, won't you just minister to your people and do a work in our spirit, in our heart, that we will turn from those evil ways and we will turn to you. If God is asking you to make a course correction in the way you minister, in the way you work, in the way you lead your family, Decide now that, Lord, I have decided to obey you and follow you. That's a test of faith. I want each one who is, who is watching this video to clear the test so that we go for the next level of test of faith. We need to grow from strength to strength. I praise God for you, for your obedience. I praise God for, for listening to the voice of the Spirit and turning your life the heaven is rejoicing for every soul that is turning their attention back to god well we'll read through the next verse by faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise as in a foreign land dwelling in tents with isaac and jacob fellow heirs of the same promise verse 10 he was looking for the city which was which has foundation and whose foundation whose architect and builder is god well, there is the third test, test of delays. We all believe in the promises of God and promises of God is yes and amen. Every word that he has spoken will come to pass. It will not go in void. And that's so true about the word of God. But the timing belongs to God. In fact, when we talk about delays and waiting, you know, this is, this is a kind of generation where even if there is a two second video in YouTube, we, we find it very frustrating. We would like to scan through some 15 to 16 posts of Instagram. Uh, I take about 15, 16 seconds, but some of you could do that in a couple of seconds. We just want things so fast. Uh, waiting is very difficult. And I thank God for lockdown. Because the lockdown did teach us that we could slow down a lot. We could wait and waiting is possible. There is an inherent need for speed for, for the la and, and which has moved into a lack of patience. And that is pretty much a culture today. Sometimes lockdowns do help us to get over such cultural issues that we need to learn that slowing down is possible. Waiting is possible. And that's one of the tests in the kingdom where the Lord allows delays in fulfillment. Why? Because we can trust in His timing. If we are people growing up in faith who trust God, we are trusting His timing. There are many things that have slowed down of late. From the time God called Abraham, or at that time it was Abraham in Haran, to the time when his son of promise, I, promise Isaac was born, it was nearly three decades of waiting. Talk about waiting. Abraham left Har Haran for the promised land when he was 75 years old. Full of faith, full of excitement, with zeal as if he's a new recruit into the, God, into the kingdom of God. Only at the seasoned age of 100 did God decide that it was time to make good of the promise. So what do you do in that time frame of 25 to 30 years? Well, when we read the scriptures, with the, those whole portion can be read in 30 minutes. From Genesis chapter 12 to 25, we would read it in 30 minutes and we feel, all right, so that's, that's just the next thing in Abraham's life. But that's not true. 
30 years of waiting it was not easy i must tell you it was not easy how much ever i stretch my imagination i know i would underestimate the personal struggles that abraham would have gone through the questions that he would have needed to ask needed to answer the kind of you know um, situations that he would have gone through the mockeries that he would have gone through and he kept on believing that god will fulfill a promise of his son god will fulfill the promise of a nation and that was a big promise talk about noah 100 years of preaching when people did not even know what is rain and what's an ark kept on preaching god's delay is not god's denial but it's the time where our faith is stretched our faith is tested to 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 show whom we believe whom we trust and whose timing we trust it is not about our timing god's timing is the best timing he has got a perfect sense of timing it's about him and him alone well a lot of life would have happened for for abraham a lot of questioning a lot of doubting a lot of thinking uh, he would have gone through a ordeal but that's a, that's the kind of a sequence that we all go through we get excited about a promise and in that excitement we go pronounce the promise which is what we got to do we got to declare the promises of god we got to speak it out believing that the promises is yes and amen that excitement is quite natural but after a period of time we go into a time of waiting and that's the time where we slow down in what we started declaring we slow down in 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 believing that god's promise is true and once the time of waiting is over then we go into a time of doubting did i hear this correct is this true maybe i'm not qualified maybe i'm not ready for it maybe i got this wrong we go through this time of doubting and after this time of doubting when we go through its test we might even deny that there is a promise that exists and that's what christ is looking at in our life what is our response through that time period where we have those doubting and waiting and testing what's our response do we still hold on to those promises bible says hold on to those promises hold on fix your eyes on jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith don't slow down well after testing we go through a time of refining and then it gets into a time of fulfillment that's a kind of a journey for some it could be one year for some five years for some 30 years i don't know what's the time period that you would need to go through but i want to tell you we'll all go through certain delays in promises but that does not mean the promises will not be fulfilled promises of god will be fulfilled but the time frame that it would take is god's timing and during that time frame what is expected of us is to hold on to his promises hold on trusting him and him alone if he has given us a word that's a word from god our father it's a word it's a promise and he's a promise keeper in his time he will do the best thing for us have you faced situations where we are in a hurry and god does not seem to be in a hurry well god is never in a hurry he's not in a hurry what is really interested is our character he's really interested is shaping us back to the image in which he created shaping us to be more like jesus that is his interest and to keep that interest he allows the time frame where the faith is tested some of us have been waiting for marriages to happen for healing to happen long time for promotions to happen for financial breakthroughs to happen for jobs well if god has promised he will bring it to pass 
trust God and trust his timing. That's a test of faith we all need to clear. And when we clear this, he takes pride to be called their God. People of God, I want to encourage you. God's timing is the best. Allow the test of faith. He's not denying it to you. He's testing our faith. Without faith, we cannot please God. And if we are people of God who wants to please our Father, the best thing that we can do is to live by faith. How do we respond to God's timing? Well, God's timing is perfect. Accept God's timing. As you narrate, as you declare the promises of God, also declare it's good in God's timing. God's never early, never late, but always on time. Our timing is in God's timing. Our God's timing always feels long and sometimes it feels delayed, but that's the best for us. During this time of waiting, it grows our faith as we are forced to wait and continue to trust in him. And, to, and it makes certain that he and he alone will take the glory when the promise is fulfilled. His delay is not denial. Wait on the Lord. Our God is a faithful God. I want to declare it. Our God is a faithful God. Everything that he promised, he will bring it to pass. These are three tests that I wanted to share today. I know many of us would be going through this test. And the reason that the Lord is bringing this word to us is to clear this test and move to the next level. To clear this test and please God. To clear this test and allow God to take pride. To be called, to be called as, I, you know, I am their God. Let's clear this test. The test of a new assignment. The test of a new direction. A test of God's timing. This is critical to grow in our faith journey. I want to encourage you, people of God, if you're going through any of these challenges, any of this test, He is the author and perfecter of our faith. He has given us a measure of, our, of faith to each one of us. He will not allow us to be tested beyond what we can endure. But he's looking for somebody who will endure the test. Who will start well and finish well. And through this process, he would continue to trust in God and God alone. Let's rise up as people of God. In material of all our circumstances. In material of all the changes that is going through. We continue to trust in our God who is the sovereign God, who reigns on high. He, he is the first and the last. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And He is watching over your life. You are very precious to Him. Your life matters to Him. And He has got a fine future for your life. Trust Him and trust Him completely. God bless you.